Let me tell you something that's on my mind these days. If you're a baseball fan, as I am in at least a major, not as wild a fan as I was as a boy, but still I read the sports page. You've been reading these days about a baseball manager who surprised everybody by resigning right in the midst of a winning streak. Uh, the person I'm speaking about is Mike Hargrove. He was at one time the manager of the Cleveland Indians and then of the Baltimore Club, now more recently of the Seattle Mariners. And he had brought the Seattle Mariners along until now they were in a grand winning streak. They were challenging for first place in their division. Uh, things were obviously going well. And like that, he resigned, said that this was enough, that the fun of the game had gone out of it for him, that there was not the excitement that he had to have, that it was drudgery, so he was quitting. Uh, since then, sports writers and a good many fellow managers or former managers have commented about what Mike did, and they confess that they know something, too, about the kind of pressure that would make them give up or quit, and that I think they were admitting that you can desire as much to quit in the midst of a winning streak as you can in the midst of defeat. Because winning and losing is not the whole measure of one's experiences in life. Sometimes, in fact, in the winning comes boredom. Or in the winning, because you no longer have the challenge of seeking to achieve at the same incentive you had before, well, therefore, you can let down a little bit, or you begin to realize that maybe winning isn't all that the ball game, any kind of ball game, life itself, it isn't all that life is cracked up to be. There's more to it than that. I have watched all of this because I knew Mike Hargrove a long while ago. Back in the days when he was a player uh, with the Cleveland Indians, that's going back quite a ways, uh, I several times spoke for the chapel service for the Cleveland Indians before Sunday baseball games, and then was with uh, Mike on a couple of occasions uh, when he and I were both speaking for some occasion. Uh, I came to know his wife, Sharon, just a bit too. Indeed brought her to speak to the women at the church of which I was pastor. So I've watched Mike Hargrove's career with more than passing interest. I've watched it not only because he was a fine baseball player and then an excellent manager, but also because he was a clear and open Christian. As I said, that was when I first came to know him was in the chapel services and on occasions when he and I would both be speaking for religious Christian occasions. I knew therefore that there was more to Mike than just a ball player. Just as there is more to you and me than teacher or preacher or bank officer or factory worker, truck driver, homemaker, nurse, doctor, there's more to us than the work we do. And we need to know, therefore, that there's more to life than the work we do. People sometimes have the impression that if they can just win, so to speak, another ball game, another election, another promotion, if they can just get a little bit more money, a little bit bigger raise, a longer vacation, that then say they'll have it made. But it just isn't that way. There's more to life than that. I'm impressed when someone can stop look at his or her own life and say, is this what I want to get out of life and what should I do next? I'm impressed with Mike and his wife, Sharon, at this point. They're both Christians. Some years ago, Sharon wrote a book out of her experience as the wife of a big league baseball player, a star athlete. She titled it in the language of baseball, Safe at Home. It was her way of making the point that the biggest thing in life for her and Mike was that their home would be a safe place 
Safe Under God, Safe to the Glory of God. It was a good title. It was a good attitude to have toward what life is all about. Our occupations change, our fortunes change, even our health changes, and certainly our age changes every day. We want to be safe at home, safe in our faith, safe if possible in the people with, who are closest to us, but safe in the knowledge that there is a home in God through Jesus Christ. That's what I've been thinking about today.